In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning to you all. You are all welcome to the Mass on the fourth Sunday in ordinary time. Let us offer this Mass for Hugh Mullen, whose mom's mind occurs at this time, and Tom Begley, Kathleen Payne, Myra Murphy, Owen Joe Woods, John Goss, and Turtle Goss, and Joseph Stewart, whose, first, whose anniversary is also occurred at this time. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual life shine upon them, and may they rest in peace. Amen. Brothers and sisters, to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. First reading, a reading from the prophet Jeremiah. In the days of Josiah, the word of the Lord was addressed to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you came to birth, I consecrated you. I have appointed you as prophet to the nations. So now brace yourself for action. Stand up and tell them all I command you. Do not be dismayed at their presence, or in their presence I will make you dismayed. I, for my part, today will make you into a fortified city, a pillar of iron and a wall of bronze to confront all this land. The kings of Judah, its princes, its priests and the country people, they will fight against you but shall not overcome you, for I am with you to deliver you. It is the Lord who speaks, the word of the Lord. Responsorial Sam, the response is, my lips will tell of your help. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me, free me, pay heed to me and save me. Be a rock where I can take refuge, a mighty stronghold to save me. For you are my rock, my stronghold. Free me from the hand of the wicked. Response. <clears throat> 
It is you, O Lord, who are my hope, my trust, O Lord, since my youth. On you I have leaned from my birth. From my mother's womb you have been my help. My lips will tell of your justice and day by day of your help. O God, you have taught me from my youth, and I proclaim your wonders still. Second reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Love is always patient and kind. It is never jealous. Love is never boastful or conceited. It is never rude or selfish. It does not take offense and is not resentful. Love takes no pleasure in other people's sins, but delights in the truth. It is always ready to excuse, to trust, to hope, and to endure whatever comes. Love does not come to an end, but if there are gifts of prophecy, the time will come when they must fail, or the gift of languages, it will not continue forever. And knowledge for this, too, the time will come when it must fail. For our knowledge is imperfect, and our prophesying is imperfect. But once perfection comes, all imperfect things will disappear. When I was a child, I used to talk like a child, and think like a child, and argue like a child. But now I am a man, all childish ways are put behind me. Now we are seeing a dim reflection in a mirror, but then we shall be seeing face to face. The knowledge that I have now is imperfect, but then I shall know as fully as I am known. In short, there are three things that last, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. No one can come to me, come to the Father except through me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus began to speak in the synagogue. This text is being fulfilled today even as you listen. And he won the approval of all. And they were astonished by the gracious words that came from his lips. They said, This is Joseph's son, surely. But he replied, No doubt you will quote me the saying, Physician, heal yourself, and tell me, we have heard all that happened in Capernaum, do the same here in your own countryside. And he went on, I tell you solemnly, no prophet is ever accepted in his own home country. There were many widows in Israel, I can assure you, in Elijah's time, when heaven remained shut for three years and six months, and a great famine raised throughout the land. But Elijah was not sent to any one of these. He was sent to a widow at Sarephath, a Sidonian town. And in the prophet Elisha's time, there were many lepers in Israel, but none of these was cured except the Syrian Naaman. When they heard this, everyone in the synagogue was enraged. They sprang to their feet and hustled him out of the town, and they took him up to the brow of the hill their town was built on intending to throw him down the cliff, but he slipped through the crowd and walked away. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's Gospel passage describes Jesus' first encounter with the people of his village after he begins his public ministry. When the people in the synagogue heard Jesus was speaking in great wisdom, they were astonished. The eloquence and the authority his words conveyed were like that of the prophets. How could the carpenter's son achieve this much wisdom without proper training in the law? Hence, Jesus quotes the famous saying, 
no prophet is ever accepted in his own country. Jesus came to his hometown as a prophet with healing in his hands, mercy in his heart, and the promise of salvation for all who were willing to listen, willing to accept him. They could not understand how a mere carpenter could be the Messiah who would liberate them from the Roman rule and re-establish the Jewish kingdom. Jesus compares the rejection of his people to that of the old prophets. The first reading describes the vocation of Jeremiah as a prophet. God told Jeremiah that he was chosen as a prophet even before he was formed in the womb of his mother. But he, clear, but he clearly knew that his mission is going to be a challenging one. So Jeremiah tried to escape this role by complaining that he was too young. His fear came into reality. Jeremiah was imprisoned and threatened with the death several times. It was painful for him to watch the destruction of Jerusalem because the people would not listen to his words. In living out his prophetic vocation while, encount while encountering rejection and persecution, Jeremiah prefigured Jesus. These are the four praises God uses to describe the intimate relationship with Jeremiah. I formed you, I knew you, I dedicated you, and I appointed you. Even though we are not prophets like Jeremiah, these words are meant for all of us. God is the one who has given life and the present mission to each one of us. Jesus, remind, Jesus reminds the people about what happened when the people of Israel rejected their prophets. The blessing went out to the Gentiles who welcomed the prophets. Elijah is the greatest of all Testament prophets, bringing back the worship of the true God. His prayer, was, his prayer was powerful to bring fire from heaven, and he was taken alive into heaven. The Jews believed that he would return during the end of times. When the Jews did not welcome him, when the Jews did not welcome him, a Gentile widow and her son gave a place to stay for the prophet. Elijah performed two miracles for the widow. The widow's more jar of flour and the tiny jug of oil were never depleted. Later, when the widow's son died, Elijah's prayers revived him from the dead. No Israelite received such a blessing. A Syrian military general by the name of Naaman came to the prophet Elisha looking for a cure for his leprosy. At Elisha's word, Naaman bathed seven times in the Jordan, after which his leprosy was healed. There were many lepers in Israel at the time, commented, commended Jesus, but only this foreigner was healed because he had faith in the man of God. The faith of these prophets is awaiting Jesus, but at the same time, the acceptance of Jesus by the Gentiles would bring many blessings to them. God can work in this world in different ways and through different people. God does not need our permission to bestow blessings on anyone. We should not reject God in our lives like the people in Jesus' hometown. Let us recognize the presence of Jesus in our lives and thus receive abundant blessings from Him. Let us also become instrument instruments of God's blessings to everyone we meet in our lives. Let us make the profession of our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. 
for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the holy spirit was incarnate of the virgin mary and became man for our sake he was crucified and was pontius pilate he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end i believe in the holy spirit the lord the giver of life who proceeds from the father and the son who with the father and the son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets i believe in one holy catholic and apostolic church i confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and i look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come amen guided by christ's words we come to you father and ask that and ask that you hear our prayers in today's gospel we hear how the people of nazareth were unwilling to listen to jesus in the synagogue and rejected him we pray today that we do not reject him but open up our hearts and minds to god's message and make it an essential part of our daily lives lord hear us lord graciously hear us in today's second reading st paul talks to us about the importance of love it is always patient and kind never jealous never rude or selfish never boastful or conceited always ready to excuse to trust to hope we pray to the lord for the grace to embrace true love in our lives in everything we do lord hear us lord graciously hear us on tuesday next february 1st as we celebrate the feast of st bridget ireland's second most revered saint we pray that the role of women in our church be truly recognized lord hear us lord graciously hear us we pray for an end to hostility and aggression among the powerful nations of the world so that love can prevail and all peoples can live in peace and harmony lord hear us lord graciously hear us we pray with pope francis for true human fraternity and for those suffering from religious racial and sexual discrimination that their rights and dignity be recognized as brothers and sisters in god's human family lord hear us lord graciously hear us we bow our heads and remember in silence our own personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers lord hear us lord graciously hear us we remember and pray for you marlen tom beglin kathleen bain myra murphy on joe woods john goss and tatla goss and joseph stewart for whom we offer this mass that they may be raised to everlasting life in the kingdom of heaven lord hear us we pray through the intercession of mary as we say hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us in this now and at the hour of our death amen lord we ask that you hear our prayers and grant us new life and hope through faith in your infinite love and generosity we ask this through christ our lord amen
frame brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and your words may be acceptable to god <coughs> the almighty father all <coughs> all lord we bring to your altar these offerings of our service be pleased to receive them we pray and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through christ our lord the lord be with you lift up your hands let us give thanks to the lord our god it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god through christ our lord for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours he humbled himself and was born of the virgin by the passion of the cross he freed us from unending death and by rising from the dead he gave us life eternal and so with angels and archangels with thrones and dominions and with all the hosts and powers of heaven we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim holy 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 lord god of hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest plus this he comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest you are indeed holy o lord the founder of all holiness may holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our lord jesus christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciple saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciple saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me the mystery of faith Therefore as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and ministered to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the holy spirit remember Lord you are church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with francis our pope and amen and michael our bishops and all the clergy remember you our servants you marlon tom begley kathleen pain myra murphy on joe woods john goss and tatla goss and joseph stewart whom you have called from this world to yourself grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection 
and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles and all the saints, Saint Bridget, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. May this mingling of the body and breath of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us, who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
let us frame nourished by these redeeming gifts we pray o lord that through this help to eternal salvation true faith may ever increase through christ our lord the lord be with you may the blessing of almighty god the father and the son and the holy spirit come upon you and remain with you forever amen our mass is ended let us go in the peace of christ